my first tip is uh, identify the customer. I should, should apologise, actually. This presentation is probably a bit like teaching your granny to suck eggs. Um, so a lot of it will sound like it's real common sense, but it's a bit worrying when you go around and talk to different businesses how little they actually uh, implement these kind of ideas. So, um, so hopefully it will gel with some people. Hopefully you'll all go away saying, oh, yeah, we do all that, that's fine. Um, but if not, then hopefully there's something to take away from it. Um, so these are my customers. Um, as I said, we're a construction company, so the guys with the hard hats, they're, they're my primary, primary set of customers. Um, the other guys are in the various systems in the, the business. He's my main customer. He's my boss. Um, lovely man. Um, and I think what that, um, that really kind of uh, shows you is that I have a group of customers that's quite diverse. He's wearing a tie, they're wearing hard hats. Um, lots of different capabilities and requirements that they all have. Um, but we've got to somehow gel that into a single, a single solution. Um, so uh, tips to do there, uh, really kind of engage with your customers. Develop a deep understanding. I have guys in my team who have been guys, uh, working with the hard hat guys for the past six months to understand very deeply how they do their jobs, what works, what doesn't work, what type of devices they need to use. Um, we've tried out things like giving them an iPad, uh, iPad minis. Um, turns out their overalls don't have a big enough pocket. So um, simple, simple kind of uh, things, but uh, surprising how, how critical they can be. Um, Techniques we can use, personas, um, often a consultation or user tests. Uh, that works particularly well when we're, um, I, I, did some, um, I did some time in the uh, gambling industry and that we spent a lot of time around uh, personas and doing user tests, um, trust being a very key aspect of that, that industry. Um, be customer led, not driven. Um, essentially, uh, deliver what the customers need, not what they tell you they want, because often what they need and what they tell you they want are different things. Again, an example from the, um, the gambling industry, the feedback we had was that don't put any cross-selling of other gambling products on your main screen because we don't want to see it, we, we, we never use it. And yet in our tests, 70% of people were clicking through and using other things. So it's a, it's a case of really kind of listen to your customers, but actually follow your own instincts as well on that. Um, developing epic themes, user stories and requirements, that really helps you develop your functional specs. And the functional specs can also be key um, when you come to testing, which I'll mention later, um, especially when you're building acceptance criteria. Um, the, the, the test uh, part of your process, whether that's internal or uh, external, um, will really benefit from having those acceptance criteria. Um, and really, uh, the final thing is, is, is use your customers to validate your plans. Once you've got a plan in place, then have a select few that you can, you can get honest opinions back from um, and really kind of uh, test what you're saying. Um, likewise, understand your business. Um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Um, and I think uh, certainly this, is, this has been true, um, certainly in my, my experience. I'm a bit of a, a geek, obviously, and there is the seduction of technology, which always comes along, um, the latest uh, Apple Watch or iPhone 6 Plus or something like that. Um, you just want to kind of deploy it and use it because it's really cool, um, but it's not always the right solution. Um, there is often a compromise between uh, the business requirements, the customer requirements, um, and that's where having good product management um, comes into play. Um, also ensuring that, the, um, that all the parts of the business are fully briefed at all times because there will be an impact. You move to mobile, it will impact everybody. Um, and so people need to be aware of um, what's happening so they can prepare for that, that impact. Um, sometimes competitive analysis can be beneficial. Um, depends on how you want to um, you want to go down that route. Whether you want to um, be a thought leader or innovator, or, or merely kind of um, stay with the, the the competition, that is actually a, you know, it's a business uh, decision rather than uh, a recommendation. Um, and of course, you know, working out the return on investment, the business cases, um, the t tactical and strategic opportunities. Um, 
and um, the slides will all be available, I think, anyway, so uh, I won't run through every single one of those. You'll be happy to hear. Um, but there's a whole bunch of business challenges and technical challenges that you can kind of run through and just um, make sure you've, got, you've, you've actually thought about everything. Whether it's important or not, you can actually just tick it off as, okay, that, that's not applicable to us, but it's worth bearing all these things in mind. Um, building a, a strategy, building a vision, that, that's, that's really key. I think some people um, start to move down the, the, the mobile route because everybody else is doing it, uh, my, my nearest competitors are doing it, so I have to do it as well. But I think that to be successful, it also requires an element of vi vision and strategy. Um, so what is our vision? Um, how do we build and maintain it? Very key. Um, because obviously you don't want to build a single solution and then that's it. Um, how do we implement that? How do we get there? And then at the bottom, the, uh, the swear word for many IT organizations, innovation. Um, but I think that, that's also a key for um, developing a long-term successful solution. Uh, think about the real world. Uh, many solutions um, that, that I've, I've seen in the past don't anticipate real world scenarios. Um, and again, it sounds like common sense, but everybody is a mobile user here, and we've all had issues with things like battery. I just checked my battery, I've got about 30% left, and I've got a three hour journey home, so uh, we'll see how we get on there. Um, camera, security, bring your own device. We had a very interesting conversation earlier about that. Um, all these are issues that your business needs to think, uh, take on board. For our, for our guys, um, we're actually sending them out into the middle of nowhere, um, taking, um, as a business, we're taking a, a minimum of 40,000 photos a month. Um, so we have data issues as well. Um, we can't have guys um, accessing their jobs if their battery has died. Um, so we're, we're implementing MDM solutions. We're looking at further ways to compress and streamline our data so we're using less less uh, capacity as well. Um, so there's a lot of things that we need to take into account. Um, and it, uh, this, this definitely comes back to that case of understanding your user. If you're sitting with them and working with them and sh seeing how they work on a day-to-day -day basis, some of these things will, will pop out very easily. Um, MDMs, there's a lot of MDM um, suppliers around today here. Um, I think that's that's really um, provides a lot of additional benefits, um, whether it's data throttling or making sure that you're not you're, you're blacklisting uh, unwanted apps, things like that, uh, can really kind of benefit your your business. Um, bear in mind, low tech can can sometimes be the best tech. Um, so SMSs, is rugged and robust and reliable, and we know it works generally. Um, and often a robust and mature solution is better than a, a cool and untried um, solution. And I, I put an Apple Watch there just to say that, you know, for instance, right now you wouldn't say run a nuclear power station from an iWatch. So, you know, it's, it's that kind of, it's good to innovate, but let's kind of be sensible sometimes. Um, and to give you a good example of, of a low-tech solution, um, uh, well, I was working for IBM and IBM supply um, Wimbledon with all their computer systems and their, their app, which is a, a, a great app, um, lets you monitor the, um, uh, the rallies in a, in a game of tennis. And, you know, I thought this was high-tech laser beams across the court that was measuring everything. Turns out they actually hire a student to sit there with an iPad and tap on a map of, this, of the court where the balls bounced. It's low-tech, but it works. And the end user doesn't know any different. Um, and students are really cost-effective as well. Um, <laughs> agile or not, uh, we've had a couple of people mention Agile in the last two or three presentations. Um, it's a difficult one, really, because Agile, so from a construction company, you probably don't want to be very Agile, because if you're building a bridge or something like that, it's not an Agile process. You know, um, you don't build a bit of it and then kind of stop and think, uh, we'll test that bit now, and now we'll build the next bit. Um, so as a business, we're not an Agile organization. However, it does suit the development of mobile solutions quite well, especially um, in the situation where, as, as as everybody is, mobile technology is steamrolling ahead. We're trying to build a solution for three, month, three or four months down the line 
and things are changing in the background. So a degree of agility is, is good, and I've used agility in a lowercase sense there as well. Um, but I think it's, it's really a case that um, in many instances, um, and I, I've, I've introduced Agile in a few companies, it's often worth introducing Agile in a, in a modified way, maybe in conjunction with a kind of a more waterfall type reporting system. Um, certain senior, you know, senior management may not be um, fully up to, the, up to speed with the way that agile project reports work and uh, project velocities being quite low to start with and then ramping up. So it's kind of one of those things that I think is worth setting expectations, making sure people understand what you're getting into before you go down a, few, a pure agile route. I know it's a trendy thing to, to say, yeah, we're an agile company, but it doesn't always work. So um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's worth bearing in mind. Um, device and platform choice. Tricky one, um, we've ha again, we had the conversation about bring your own device in my particular organization at the moment. We require that our, uh, de uh, our users have rugged devices, uh, significantly rugged devices, so bring your own device really isn't, isn't a, a starter for us, even though some of the directors seem to have unofficially already gone down that route, but that's a different story. Um, however, deploying devices um, from our point of view, it gives us full control over what we're deploying, especially when we're um, delivering a solution, an MDM on top. Um, it allows us to kind of exert control where required. I, I prefer to leave the device um, relatively free to use for our employees. I feel that if they feel it's their device and they're browsing at lunchtime or whatever and they're not um, massively damaging their uh, data tariff or anything like that, then I'm happy for them to go ahead with it. I'm, ha I'm also happy to exert some control if I find that they are uh, uh, over exuberant with YouTube or anything like that. So um, that's that's kind of something that every business has to take its own view on. Um, uh, I've, I've also worked in businesses where choose your own device is actually a, a very good option as well. It, it's a very good compromise. Um, and as we heard earlier, there's there's a lot of uh, morale benefits to be gained from a business giving you a nice new device. Um, we're also looking at um, multiple platforms, um, iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, but uh, on all of those we're looking at containerizing um, solutions, which gives us the ex added security that we can wipe that, uh, that um, business container when we require it um, and leave the personal data or personal photos uh, of the user alone. Um, and just to mention that HTML5, definitely an option, especially if you're going to be use it, uh, delivering to a mixed, uh, a mixed um, mobile estate. Um, gives you, it, it will give you more kind of cross-platform capabilities. However, it it's, does have its limitations as opposed to the, the native solutions. Testing, it's, it's really important. That's why I named it three times. Um, and I think it's worth bearing in mind that testing and validation should be really engaged um, from day one in your project. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, when you're building your functional spec and you're creating your acceptance criteria for, yes, this, uh, this is a solution where if this happens, we accept it, um, that's where your testing teams need to be involved. Uh, whether it's internal or external, um, the general um, testing uh, acceptance criteria can then produce the uh, test scripts or whatever that you're using to, to validate your final solution. Um, again, planning decisions can, uh, can have consequences. If you start to go down a bring your own device route, then your test, if it's an internal test house, uh, a test team, they will find that try, you, you will have to name a, uh, a subset of devices that they will test against. Otherwise, you can uh, run systems like Device Anywhere, which allow you online access to kind of almost every device that's available. Um, equally, you can go with an external test house that then has uh, access to, to multiple devices as well. Um, again, it's uh, it's very hard to be specific with a with a kind of a, a mixed audience, so um, you really need to look into that. But testing is absolutely critical and is often left as a as an afterthought. Um, data is your friend. Um, so I, I did spend some time at IBM where uh, big data is their, is their catchphrase. Um, 
So really consider data to be part of your unique selling point, your KPIs. Um, it's really the, um, a lot of the value that you gain out of going mobile is, is acquired from the data that you're going you're gonna to gather. Um, so when you're developing your products, make sure the analytics are set up correctly uh, and in the right way and using the right tools. Um, Google Analytics, uh, Flurry, whatever you want to use. Uh, but make sure they're the correct analytics for, for what you want to achieve. Make sure that they're set up correctly and that they're in the architectural design from day one. And also that if you need to add things in the future, that capability is thought, thought through as well. Um, bearing in mind that the behavioral data that you'll pick up is massively important and really powerful. Um, and um, it can, if you're going to external customers, it can really uh, uh, be a massive gain to your, to your marketing department. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you can get, you should be potentially looking at multiple sources of data and low tech. Uh, students with iPads looking at tennis courts, um, that can deliver as much value as, as kind of a, an integrated high-tech solution as well. Worth bearing in mind that, uh, that within the data that you captured, there will be legal and social considerations if you're capturing data on your own uh, organization. So it's worth bearing those in mind. Again, um, would recommend that when you're discussing this, that's part of the consultation. You talk to staff and say, these are the sort of things we need to work on. This is why we're capturing this sort of information. Uh, IT is an enabler. Um, so I think historically IT department, so I, I should point out, as head of mobile, um, this is the first time I've actually been part of an IT department. My role has generally been in marketing, weirdly, so I don't know if that's a, a comment on the way the industry is moving at the moment. But uh, one of the things that's certainly noticeable is that IT departments, um, uh, hopefully, in, in my experience and hopefully in yours, are becoming more engaged with mobile solutions and are becoming enablers rather than dictators. And you know, not, not simply there to say, no, you can't do that, but to say, we've set up the systems for you to enable you to go and play and to deliver innovation and solutions, such as Joe was mentioning uh, a couple of presentations ago. Um, I think it's worth, when you're starting the mobile solution, that IT should be in from day one again. Um, and really, from their point of view, um, they need to know that you've considered all the, all the use cases and the, the, the business cases, because IT changes are expensive and can be wide uh, wind raging and very impactful. So um, I think, uh, and I think the, the last line, they can have unexpected consequences. So really to understand that what you're, you're doing has added, adds a huge amount of value to the business, needs to be part of your business case that then is fed into the, uh, to the IT department. Um, and finally, um, yeah, there's only 10, thank God. Um, planning for the future. So act on your analytics. Don't be afraid to drop features if they're not being used. I was at a, a customer of ours this week, and they've just spent two years building a system, um, and they're now developing a phase two version of their system, and they're dropping 50% of the features because they found they weren't being used. Now, to me, that's, that's on the one hand, it's, it's good because they're not being afraid to uh, streamline what they're building, but it also says, I don't think you actually understood your customers to start with. So I think it's, it's one of those things, it's kind of a bit cyclical. Bear in mind what your customers want to do now. Deliver what, it, what adds value in a way that adds value to them and adds, um, adds to their, their daily job. Um, don't, don't go overboard. Don't build stuff because you can. Um, rely on your customer feedback, whether that's through... Um, social networks, we use Yammer in, in our business. Um, whether you use um, Apple uh, iStores or whatever, and you get feedback from your customers that the whole world can see. Um, make sure you are getting that customer feedback. You are taking the time to talk to people who are using the systems you're deploying to find out what's working and what isn't working. Um, and really feed that into the roadmap and the vision, really. Um, and I think in conclusion, um, Every solution is different, so I've tried to be very generic um, because I know that there's uh, each one of those areas you would you might do specifically different things depending on the business. Um, try and learn from people who've done stuff before. 
Um, there's a lot of information out there. It's great coming to these events because you can network with people. I'm, I'm not selling anything unless you want holes being dug or anything like that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm literally just, this is, this is advice from um, experience I've had. Communication is key. Consult and engage um, early and frequently uh, and keep that going. And that's not just with the people you think you're impacting, that's with everybody because they will be impacted as well. Um, success isn't guaranteed, but really you owe it to yourselves to really kind of give yourself the best chance of, of success. Okay, thank you. Excellent, big round of applause. Thanks. Thanks very much, Ed. That was excellent. Really good.